When you shoot a gun in a first person shooter, it's supposed to make you feel something. That feeling is important to the way that gun plays and how you can best play it. Today we're going to talk about the shotguns, one of six weapon classes available in Titanfall 2, and the pistols, one of two secondary weapon classes. Before we get started, anytime I reference damage numbers, I'm referring to a spreadsheet created by a fellow Titanfall player named Matt H. Unfortunately, because of the way Respawn handles their patches, some of these numbers will be off by a few points, but they're mostly correct. Now let's get into it. If you like to get rid of your enemies, but you want to make sure they see your face before they meet their maker, the shotgun is the weapon you're looking for. Devastating up close, but ineffective at longer ranges, shotguns are specialized weapons that, without careful planning, will cause your bloody rampage to be cut wildly short. Pistols are your trusty sidekick, or should I say your trusty sidearm. Since the earliest days of war, soldiers have been carrying secondary weapons onto the battlefield, and on the frontier, that fact is still true. The EVA 8 Auto is a monster. It will absolutely destroy anyone foolish enough to step in front of you. On top of that, it can destroy multiple foes very quickly because of its respectable rate of fire and 6 round magazine. For someone looking to get in, spray hot lead, cause a bloody mess and get out in the blink of an eye, there's no choice that feels as right as the EVA 8. There are plenty of weapons on the frontier that can take out enemies quickly, but none do it quite as easily as the EVA 8. That's the beauty of a shotgun. It's not supposed to require precision or thought, just point, pull the trigger, and let the red mist roll in. Now for the downsides. I hate getting killed by the EVA 8 because it feels unfair and I know you feel the same way, but it's not unbeatable. Take one step back and the EVA 8 will lose most of its effectiveness. Take three steps and you'll hear a bang but you won't feel a thing. This shotgun sacrifices everything to become a hyper specialized close range killer. Anything outside of that range, you've got more than a good chance of stopping your attacker. This shotgun is powerful but it has limitations and if your opponent knows you have one and they start playing against your strengths, you'll be in for some trouble. If the EVA 8 Auto is a monster, then the Mastiff is a demon. This oversized shotgun is the innovative product of a group of mad scientists. It has a sluggish rate of fire of roughly one round per second, but lucky for you, at the ranges you'll be engaging, you won't need more than one shot most of the time. While we're on the subject of range, shotguns are known for lacking in that department, but the Mastiff is a trailblazer though it will struggle to compete with the EVA 8 Auto at close range because of its lower rate of fire, it can damage and kill targets from unnatural distances. You won't be going head to head with marksmen, but you'd best believe they'll think twice about poking their heads out while a wall of superheated plasma is flying at their face. Another unique aspect of this gun is its projectile spread. It's a perfectly flat horizontal line that can be tightened slightly by aiming down sights. This increases the likelihood of hitting distant targets with at least a few of your eight plasma pellets, but that does mean distant targets will require a few extra shots. And thus we see again why this gun's slow rate of fire holds it back. The Mastiff is trying very hard to innovate, and while some of its innovations fall a few inches short of absolute success, it's not a bad weapon and it has enough good qualities and benefits over its counterpart to give reason to choose one over the other. Now I've got a question for you. Is it possible to fit the unnatural demonic energies of the Mastiff into a pistol? The 
answer is yes. The SA-3 Mozambique is a pistol shotgun hybrid. It packs a devastating punch, the strongest in the pistol category, but not enough to kill targets in one shot unless it's a headshot. Capable of firing 180 rounds per minute, unlike its bigger brother, it has a faster rate of fire than the EVA-8, which means when a follow-up shot is needed, the Mozambique will win the race, even if only by a quarter of a second. Also, like the Mastiff, it's got range, so while the EVA will always win in the tightest corridors, the Mozambique will hold its own out in the field. This thing is a true hand cannon, but because it's a hybrid weapon, it can't be compared to just the shotguns. For a pistol, its performance is admirable. It packs the hardest punch in its category, with its downsides being the smallest magazine capacity and slow-moving projectiles. But those are hardly complaints when you consider this is a secondary weapon. When you pull it out, you want it to end your targets, no questions asked. And the Mozambique will do that every time. The Hammond P2016 is an unimposing handgun that speaks softly and shoots you in the back before you have a chance to say anything bad about it. Except for its lightning fast reload times, it has average feeling stats across the board. Though for a pistol secondary weapon, it packs a decent punch when fired within its effective range. The Hammond is an easy choice for a pilot looking to complement a specialized primary weapon. It's accurate and deadly, but those aren't the qualities that draw me to this pistol. Most of the pistol secondary weapons on the frontier can be suppressed, but the P2016 is the only one that feels dangerously natural with a muzzle on its muzzle. There's something James Bond about having a suppressed semi-automatic pistol that can take down enemy pilots with two shots in the chest and one in the head. This pistol is a force to be reckoned with, but make no mistake, it's a true secondary weapon, especially when suppressed. With a respectable rate of fire that's ultimately capped by the speed of your trigger finger and a spread that makes aiming down sights feel mandatory, it's best used for swift finishes or silent assassinations. Running around expecting to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with alternators, vault, devotion, and other top-tier weapons will get you punished unless you're at the top of your game. The Hammond is without a doubt a standard issue sidearm, but I'd be lying if I said every grunt and pilot will be proficient with it. So what about the average Joe, someone like you and me? What type of pistol is best for us? The top of my game is still leagues behind the best. It's fun to roam around pretending to be 007, but it's important to remember he was an elite spy, well-trained, the best of the best. Using a weapon fit for the greatest secret agent of all time can be challenging, but luckily the manufacturers of the RE45 Auto realized this. Fully automatic and fitted with an HCOG sight, the RE45 is an everyman weapon. An untrained grunt or a super elite pilot can pick this thing up point it in the general vicinity of bad guys and end them. Unfortunately, its fully automatic fire isn't entirely accurate and its 20 round magazine empties quickly because of its high rate of fire, but at the end of the day, just like the Hammond P2016, the RE45 Auto is a pistol that does what a pistol is supposed to do without requiring the extra bit of precision and training demanded by the Hammond. It's time for a blast from the past. This weapon harkens back to a time when the frontier was the wild west of North America. The vehicle of choice wasn't a Titan, it was a horse and carriage. And guns weren't bloated with fancy tech. Just two pounds of pistol and six rounds of grade A lead. The B3 Wingman is a gunslinger's weapon of choice.
Now, saying the B3 wingman is difficult to use is a gross misuse of the word difficult. And rightfully so. This thing won't just kill your enemies, it'll knock them flat on their asses and make them feel like Big Mama gave them a proper ass whooping. It hurts. Unlike the weapon of choice for James Bond, the wingman only holds 6 rounds per magazine and has a maximum fire rate of 156 rounds per minute, 2.6 rounds per second. With no way to fan the hammer, it's comparatively slow and that slowed rate of fire means every pull of the trigger is vitally important. For someone used to a spray and pray method, the wingman will feel like a foreign language. But if you were plucked from the same mold as Billy the Kid, Butch Cassidy, and Matt Dillon, you'll do just fine. The wingman is hard to use, but it's a solid package and it will serve you well, just like it served those cowboys back in the day. Now, if the default variant of the wingman isn't doing it for you, you can pick up the elite model. With a projectile that sacrifices speed for an unprecedented punch, the Wingman Elite is not a pistol for the faint of heart. It has the same characteristics of its counterpart, with more damage output, it's just harder to use, which means the smart choice is to go with the standard variant. But the Wingman Elite isn't a gun for someone looking to be practical. It's gratuitous and flashy. Every time you kill someone with this gun, everyone witness to your act of terrifying skill will think to themselves, whoa, and then they'll realize their friend just got their brain splattered on the wall. Truth be told, I'm not a gunslinger. I wish I were skilled enough to reliably finish my foes with either version of the wingman, but I'm not, and for that reason, I stay away from both versions of this gun. But if you take it on a serious mission, you must have some seriously impressive skills and a desire to put on a performance while you dominate your opponents. Just like with every other weapon category, there's a pistol that reigns supreme. The ultimate secondary weapon. But unlike the snipers, submachine guns, assault rifles, and grenadier weapons, there's no pistol that learns from the lessons of the past. There's no ultimate fusion that combines the good and the bad to make something special. But there is a weapon in this category that completely rewrites history and changes all the rules in the process. The smart pistol is perfection. It's a gun that literally aims itself. Though its targeting has a limited range, pilots have never had trouble closing the distance, so that's hardly a mark against it. With a comfortably strong round, enemy pilots will be taken out after acquiring three target locks and pulling the trigger. Other targets will fall from just one deadly accurate shot. It's an all-around solid weapon, but it's not raw statistics and technological marvel that make the smart pistol so amazing. There's no other weapon in existence that synergizes so perfectly with a pilot and their capabilities, removing from their mind questions about recoil, hip fire spread, and accuracy. The smart pistol allows its user to experience the limit of their movement capabilities. The user is free to enjoy the sights and sounds of the frontier, while their pistol acts as the ultimate sword, one so powerful it doesn't require a shield. With a weapon so powerful and so perfect, does that mean there's no room for the P2016 and the RE45 Auto? Surprisingly, no. What about the Mastiff and Mozambique? Surely they'll fall by way of the Dinosaur because their innovations pale in comparison to the Smart Pistols. No, they'll stick around too. Well, the B3 Wingman and its Elite variant are relics from another era. There's no way they can survive in this brave new world. On the contrary, it's those relics and the artisans that wield them that will pave the way for the rest of us. And finally, what about the EVA 8? He'd like to have a word with the smart pistol in a very tight corridor, so he can prove once and for all whether three bullets or eight pellets kill faster. 
Mm, that got heavy again. Can we see that specter fall on his ass one more time? Yeah, there we go. That's a good way to end. So, as always, the name of the game is Titanfall 2. The name of the channel is iBlueAirJGR Gaming for Comedy. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.